All right. Well, good morning. This is probably, uh, we might have one in May if we need to follow up with things, but I know May gets to be pretty busy. So this, this might be our last, I think it was our last one scheduled and I moved the date um, till this morning, hoping that that might work for a few more people. But we um, will just kind of work through some of this today is for you and some of it is for us to get some information too. So um, Steph, are you on a time crunch? I want to ask you first. Yeah, a little bit. Um, um do you want to go ahead and cover? Go time? ahead. I have till 10 15. So why don't you go ahead with your motivation Monday? Okay. We'll see if we can get a few more people on. Okay. So on my motivation Monday, I just made that up. Um, but what motivated you to step up and become an educational leader? This was asked to us at, um, doesn't mean you had to become a principal or something. We were at a um, a meeting. And I thought that was a really, uh, just a good reflection statement because sometimes what motivated us to do this at the beginning is not why we do it now. But does anybody want to share what motivated you to step up and become an educational leader? Hey, this is Cody. Am I the only principal on here? Michaela Ryder is too. Yep. Michaela's here too. Okay. Yep. I'll, I'll just say what motivated me a little bit. My first, so when I was hired, I was hired in Lexington at their middle school and our first principal that we had, he's now superintendent at Loop uh, Loop City. Dean Tickles his name, but I don't know. I just, the way he interacted and relationships he had with his other teachers and whatnot kind of motivated me, you know, to do that. Um, he kind of approached me as well. And after a couple of years and encouraged me to go that direction a little bit. So I don't know if that's a great answer or not, but yeah. Anyone else want to share? You are all educational leaders. So in your own form. I guess mine was just to make sure that we have quality education in all classrooms here. And so that's why I went back to couldn't do as a classroom teacher. I couldn't affect all the classrooms as a classroom teacher. And I knew being a principal, I could affect every single classroom here and every student that walked through there to make sure that they had a quality education. I think I'm similar to that in that um, I'm very curious about systems and uh, I saw areas where I felt like the system needed to grow, but I knew I couldn't help fix a system if I didn't really fully understand the system. And if you need to understand the system, you have to get into it by getting into leadership. So um, similar to Michaela, fixing the system by understanding the system and that requires leadership. You know, I think I thought I I had taught in the classroom for a while. You know, I was ready for a new challenge too, and um, to grow. Um, and I think it is so gratifying working in so many different schools with different people at different levels. So principals, but teachers, paras, um, hopefully substitutes this year. So um, it's it's fun to affect all those different groups and work with them, learn from each other. And I would build off of kind of what Cody said. I was went into leadership um, because I've been really fortunate to always had to be under great administrators. And so that was kind of the direction I went and yeah, excited to help schools. I think school has always been an interest to me. And so any involvement at any level is always um, giddy to help and get involved. So it's good to be part of this group. I'll be honest, I started my, um, actually my administrative degree early on. And it was, I was a single mom and it was to move up the pay scale. However, um, leadership has always been something that um, I would say I fell into probably because um, it was just something that I was interested in and did a lot of. And so I, when I started mine, I, I knew that I had several years in the classroom yet before I was ready to take on any, something like that. Um, but I think that it's our nature. We just do a lot of things that lend us to being really good leaders. So, um, thank you all for sharing that. Um, Steph, do you want to share about your stuff? Cause yep. I, 
I don't want to run you out of time. So we'll sure. jump. Steph has a couple things she wants to share. Then she's got to jump off. Yeah. So um, the first thing is um, I'm out of the school today. Sorry, guys. Um, so I'm just jumping on for a moment in between um, or during a letters break. Um, but, um, you know, the idea started to come to us about having a sub training day, kind of like we have um, a para training day each summer. And, um, you know, we had secretaries in school secretaries, and it came up that um, at um, one of the biggest school shootings, um, it, it was a sub on duty who had a door open, door propped open kind of situation. And I thought, do our subs, have they ever had standard response protocol? And have they learned some of those um, uh, procedures that we are are standardized throughout schools? Um, so in this day, um, we're going to have that standard response protocol. And I think about our subs, maybe they are retired, maybe some things have changed, but also some of our subs are those local subs who might not have a teaching degree, who might not have come by some of the school safety information. The day is not all about school safety though. Um, I was really thinking about those local subs and how we need to help equip them with some of the skills to help them feel successful. Um, we need them now more than ever with our sub shortages. And so we're gonna work on things like classroom management. Um, JC's gonna come help us with some digital citizenship things about you know, when you're working with kids, your online presence is now going to be just a little bit different and you have to be a little bit more careful and what kinds of things can you share or not share. Um, we're going to work on some positive behavior supports that come from PBIS, but can be implemented in any system. I think about some of those local subs who maybe experienced um, behavior management in a different way than we um, we do now. Um, it was more authoritative. It was um, not as positive as we would like to see in our schools today. So we hope that you can get some of your subs on board. The thing is um, that we need you to help register those subs. We're going to have schools actually send us in the registration information. So on this um, flyer, there's a link at the bottom. I've also emailed it to you. And um, you will just go ahead and register your subs. There is a $20 fee um, that kind of covers some of our supplies and lunch. Um, and that will be billed to schools. Um, but if you can supply us with um, sub names and email addresses and things like that, so we can be in touch with them um, for reminders for the day. Um, we're looking forward to it. Um, we have NDE book to come in and help us with some of that safety information. Um, and then our staff will be providing the rest of the day. So we hope you can get some people registered to come with us. And the next one is also on a safety matter. Um, I was, um, in touch with Scott Stemper, who's actually coming out to do that training. And, um, he said that the public policy center has a grant right now, um, to provide like a half day training for safety teams, right? Each of your school has the safety team that's been identified. And um, they would give scenarios like possibly a tornado, or he said even a tornado during a track meet. And it immediately took me back to May 12th of last year when that dust storm hit right at the end of the school day. And it sent some of us kind of scrambling of what do we do with our kids? Um, uh, it could be an active shooter. Um, they have separate, several different scenarios that they will help your teams work through. Um, so we thought that was an excellent opportunity for your training teams. We want to hear from you. Would you send a training or a, a safety team for that? Um, and they had first proposed early August and I said, no, do not do that to our schools. <laughs> it's too busy. Um, so we're asking you, would late August or early September be more agreeable on that? So I'd like to hear from some of you um, principals what you think about either day, the sub day, the safety training day. Hey, this is Cody. The, the sub day, I think it's a good idea. Um, it makes sense to me to do that early August, late July, instead of right after school. Then that gives us a chance to contact our subs and stuff a little ahead of time. And as that school year's coming up, we usually, last couple of years, we went through in the summer and 
I guess we contact all of our subs, see what kind of days they want as far as the year goes and stuff. So okay, it makes sense to me to do that that late July, early August for the sub day. Uh, safety training day, either one, probably early September would be good. Either one, though, probably we can make work. Okay. Ben or Michaela, you guys have thoughts on on what works for you then, or if you're interested? I'll talk with Ron about it, and I think they both look pretty decent. But I do know a lot of our assistants in the office have already gone to the safety. Yeah, this would be a little bit different where your whole team would work on some scenarios like if it's a tornado during a track meet or no, that's a good idea mm -hmm. just to talk through your plan. <laughs> we have our principals okay. meeting for Good morning, Patty. Sorry, I got a new computer and didn't realize that I didn't put zoom on it. So I scramble in to try to find a way to get in. Patty, we're talking about um, that sub day, that sub support day that I sent out some information on mm -hmm. a couple of times um, and just the need to get subs some needed information, especially those who are maybe local subs who don't have teaching degrees. Um, we also have a safety component for any sub. Um, and then also a safety training. Um, there's a grant to fund this and um, they would work through scenarios of say there's a tornado at a track meet or an active shooter in your building. And they have several different scenarios that you could work through in a half day with a safety team. Okay. Um, we're proposing late August or early September for that. Okay. How would either of those sound or both? Um, don't care. We just need to get something in place. Okay. So are you saying your safety team needs some PD? I, cause I have some other safety things here I want to uh, talk about. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anything else, Steph? I mean, Steph, you're welcome to stay, but anything about letters? Um, yeah, just a reminder about letters. We're now enrolling for next year. Um, we would love to have your staff included. Um, don't, um, it's a misconception to think that volume one is enough. Um, really the full component is volume one and volume two. So I know Elkhorn Valley, you're signed up, you're coming. A bunch of teachers are jumping on for volume one and volume two. Um, Michaela's team is coming. Uh, the whole team has gone through volume one and they're going to go through volume two with me next year. We're really excited about that. So reach out if you have any letters, questions. Neely Oakdale's graduating, right, Ben? Yeah. Letters. New teachers that are coming on. She's got mm -hmm. some that you don't have to do your whole staff. It would just, yeah. they would come for, if you've got a new teacher that you need to send through or something too. Yeah, those mixed groups. Yeah. And then also um, we're continuing on our parrot um, training series. So um, that will be, I believe that's August 1st. It's on the calendar. Um, and um, I'll be, I sent that out once already, but I'll send it out a reminder. Um, we love having your pairs there. They are the most grateful people to receive a training day. Um, they, they feel honored that you invest in them. Um, and our theme this year is gardening and growing those kids um, in our, in our gardens for the year. So planting that seed for success. Um, if you have any topics you think would be really important for subs or for, sorry, paras to cover or subs for that matter too, um, shoot them my way. All right. Great. Thanks, Steph. Any Thanks, questions? Everybody. Enjoy your day at letters. Yeah, I will. Your life of, letters. Letters. life of letters. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Um, we'll jump back up to the top. I know Katrina's in another meeting too. So she's jumped out and um, she's welcome to stay the whole time too. But if you want to go back to, um, I just put it as tier one needs assessment questions for, and Katrina, you can explain why we're doing this and everything. So yeah, um, if you want to yeah. open that document. Um, so I, uh, NDE, um, we, we're working on collecting information um to best help our school districts um, really streamline their adoption processes and connect them to MTSS tier one best practices. 
um, and support. And so we are just going to use this document. I'm going to take some notes in this note catcher. Um, but Molly, when we send this out, um, I did make this view only. So if we have other school districts that want to complete this, maybe they can just make a copy of this document. Um, and just since you're sending this out as a recording, you'll just go up to file, make a copy, um, and then they can just share that back with me. So um, anyway, I just wanted to take a few minutes and just kind of gather some information from uh, those of you who are present today. Um, to give us some feedback on sort of your practice for adoption and implementation for high quality materials. We know a lot of uh, schools got new materials with uh, ESSERS funds, et cetera, in the last few years. And so we're kind of wanting to update that and, and use that to inform how we move forward in our support of you um, as you are implementing those materials. So um, the three of you, is it still, yep, three of you, uh, four of you, sorry. Um, if you could look at that question one, there's you know four options there. Would you be able to tell me kind of where you are um, in your approach to the role of materials in the classroom? And, and what I will do is I'll just put your district name under each one of those as you respond. So A, consistent foundation for um, grade level teaching and learning. You expect all teachers to use those as their primary source. Um, for instruction in the classroom. Um, B, you encourage them to use it as a starting point, but you do not have an, a, an expectation that they are a primary resource in their planning and instruction and implementation. Um, C, you really trust that your teachers know best and you encourage them, um, but you also encourage them to create teacher-created materials. Or D, if you don't see something there and you have something else that you'd like to share. And there's no right or wrong, but this nope. will help us when we go um, in a couple of weeks, we are doing a training. And so they wanted to kind of see where schools were before we went. So, and as I work through um, districts and help them with, you know, their, their lesson planning and their curriculum and instructional design, this just kind of gives me an idea of, you know, where their starting point is and where they want to go. Hey, this is Cody West Holt. Uh, we did new ELA and new math this year. Um, B is kind of where I started this year, I would say. Um, encourage them to use it and kind of feel it out. I did, however, have a conversation. Our English teachers are probably more A. Um, did have a conversation with our math teachers, though. Um, we had uh, one teacher kind of at A, a couple teachers kind of at B to C. Uh, had a conversation with math, math teachers. I wanted to move everybody to A next year. So that's kind of where we were at anyway with the new ones. Okay. Thank you. Or A. Okay. And the only is A. We, we go with A because if not, um, they would just go back to using the same stuff that they felt comfortable with forever. So, okay. Neelio well, we said A between an A and a B. And okay, Michaela. Okay, Michaela, do you can you share um between an A and B? Can you share just a little bit more what you mean by that? We also just adopted math and reading. So we're gonna be doing more curriculum mapping, some more planning on exactly at what point you should be here using what material. Um and so we will be a strong A, hopefully in the next year or two. Um, but yeah, we in the past yeah. they've been able to use whatever, mm -hmm. and so it's kind of it's an implementation right process, right? Yeah, there's mm -hmm. every once in a while. Oh no, you can't. You're not. You're not. You're not using that. You're using this. Sure. So, um, and other schools, when you said A, is that across all content areas um, that you expect that or in core, just in core areas? Ours is in reading, math, science, or no, reading, math, and social studies. We will be adopting a new science program here next year. And so it will be in science also. Okay. And then our intervention and enrichment is a hard A that's there's no supplementing there you said that was your enrichment mm -hmm. okay and enri enrichment and interventions are yeah. all district 
school purchased assigned. There's no supplementing whatsoever. Okay. All right. Anything else you'd like to add to that? Um, if not, if you look down quick at question two, strengths and challenges in your adoption process. So as you have adopted, what are some things that maybe you feel have gone really well in this process and in some areas of challenge that you have um, been facing? Um, some of our strengths at EV is that the staff pretty much knows when it's time to revamp things. Um, and for the most part, they're all pretty good about it. We all have, we order samples. They take a look at it, decide which of those is going to fit best with our needs, um, with the standards, those kinds of things. And then, of course, your challenges. There's always that one that says what we're doing is just fine. Now you've been doing the same thing for 20 years. It's not fine. <laughs> So a little bit of resistance, but in general, your teachers. Yeah, the for the most part, they're they're yeah, very right. good about, you know, they know the process. And if you don't have any interest in helping, then you don't have a say. This is what we're going with and you will be expected to use it. So they just never want that to happen. Okay. The process I've used for the last couple of years is, um, we look at our data to determine whether we're making gains or not. And then um, we have a curriculum rotation. And so then um, whatever one we're on, if we're not meeting or still making gains, um, I require the staff to go look at different curriculums online or wherever, um, compile a list of curriculums that they would like to see. Then we order samples. Um, once they get the samples, they look to see um, personally which ones, which, what are their top three. We compile those. Um, and then I have a rubric that they have to go through. Um, goes by whether it's meets ed reports and material matters. And there's a list of them. They have to go through and check all through all of them. They have to go check make sure they meet our Nebraska standards. Um, if there's any components missing, um, I'm not for sure what else is on there anymore. Um, sure. And then we rate each program that we do, and then they have to pilot the top two programs for at least a week. Some of them too, if we can't decide, like science right now, we're having a hard time picking. And so they're going to pilot each one for another week to see if it's the curriculum, see if it's teacher familiar, familiar, air, bleh, can't say that word. <laughs> um, already, yeah. Hopefully sure. we'll get uh, okay. one next year in the next couple weeks. All right. Thank you. Hi, Will. Um, we are just looking at this um, document that's in the agenda for today. Um, on looking at your adoption and implementation process. Okay. Um, ben or Cody, do you want to, do you have anything you'd like to add to that one? Yeah, we're pretty much the same as Elkhorn Valley and Wheeler Central. We, I kind of let the teachers lead a little bit as far as which curriculums they want to take a look at. We check out reports, uh, get samples in, you know, we meet a couple, two, three times, let the teachers play with it a little bit in their rooms, see which one they think fits for them. So mm -hmm. pretty much we also sent them on visits just to make sure um, they went to Neely. I know in elementary, um, they went to Neely to look at, um, so it's an all a letter one CK. CK and then they went to David city. And then I think they went to Hampton to look at how things were done as well. Okay. Mr. Dempsey, do you have anything you'd like to add? We had all of our elementary involved and our high school English, but we had a committee selected from those that group uh, with Ron and I and that in those. And pretty much the the committees are the ones that really dug through and found uh, out the information that was most beneficial 
then uh, listed the pros and cons and ended up with CKLA and uh, ELA Amplify. It was a very, it was a, you know, it was a long process, but it was very uh, successful. Good. Good. Okay. Awesome. Mr. Reggie, is there something you'd like to add? I know you were just able to kind of see where we are, but if you want to add something, be happy to put you down here. Um, I mean, curriculum wise, looking for math, our whole math department has kind of got together, uh, browsing through the different curriculum types. I've contacted uh, then the companies to get samples sent in. Uh, we spent a day looking at the curriculums. Uh, teachers have kind of played with what they like, didn't like, and then we're going to go look at schools that have um, the current curriculum. Right now, we've talked with West Holton Cody to go look at into math and into AGA, but I think math has kind of been the tough ones so far because everyone's at the crossroads of needing to find a new one, and uh, there's not a whole lot of places to go out and check out who's used it or who's even had a lot of time to go through it with West Holt having it for this last year. It's great, but you know, if if we had found a, another school that has used it for a couple years just to know all the nuts and bolts, that'd be great, but. Sure, yeah. Um, okay, we'll just skip down to the one below and and I'll try to summarize, especially if a lot of you kind of have the similarities. Um, so in terms of when you do adopt, and, and this goes back to that first question, most of you said you have an expectation that teachers um, will use their adopted materials as their primary source, or you're planning on moving toward that in the next, um, you know, few years. So what do you do to ensure that that, that the teachers are actually using those as their primary resources? Do you have anything in specific or is it just, you know, you trust them to be professionals and expect that that's what they're doing? Just do a lot of walkthroughs and I, I'm in their classrooms a lot when they use them. Um, I will tell you, I had to go as far as with one teacher because she just refused to use the new stuff. We adopted a six, seven, eight program where they rotate. It's the Glencoe series. Um, and then they rotate based upon the needs of the kids because you can no longer do what you did in seventh grade and in eighth grade and in sixth grade and expect them to meet all the standards. So we adopted one where they rotate um, based on, you know, the length of the units and those kinds of things, how long. So they they worked out a system on how they rotate those, but she just refused to do it. So um, she had to actually put it in her lesson plans, what she was doing. And then I had to check on it because she just wasn't doing what she was expected to do. Mm -hmm. I don't have to go to that length with, many people, but if needed, I, I will do that because I know she wasn't using it. Okay. Anybody else have anything they would like to add on that? We not only check to make sure they're using it, but we got, we're checking for the fidelity amongst all the teachers. That's the ma main, that was our main emphasis is that we had to have fidelity. Ben, and how are you K-12? Um, it was, uh, the new, the new, uh, program was for, uh, K, uh, eight, one CKLA, the other one ELA Amplify. And for the most part, all of our teachers are, they're all using it and pretty much everyone is using it with, uh, with there's fidelity in every one of them. Ben, are okay. you doing those fidelity checks? I'm just curious. I do them and Becky Kirkman does them over here and Becky does them and Ron does them over at uh, Eastward, mm -hmm. I mean Westward. Yep. Okay. Anybody else want to add to that? Okay. I mean, we do the walkthroughs as well, but then on some of our staff development days, have the department meet together to kind of do pacing guide and just see exactly how things are going and sit in those meetings as administration just to see where we're at and how, how things are going is, is there a little bit of missteps that we maybe didn't calculate, but yeah, otherwise it's like everyone else has said, you do your walkthroughs and you trust your teachers. Mm -hmm. So do you all have a formal walkthrough tool then that's aligned with um, 
the, the standards and uh, the expectations than a formal tool. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, what do you think the, the main challenges are that you're finding? I know um, Patty, you had mentioned, you know, a few teachers, you know, maybe just struggling or resisting using them because it's maybe not comfortable. Do you have any other challenges that you could um, you support in with your teachers um, when they're adopting new materials into the classroom? Okay. Well, we we always call if we need help. We call people from the ESU and they come over and <laughs> do what we need them to do. So that's our point. I of heard some of you though talk about like in their grade level meetings or their um, I'm going to call them PLCs, but they in your math department maybe gets together and talks about those things and and that's a it's a good way to support that. Um, Will I think you mentioned that that they'll kind of look and see if they're you know how their pacing's going or those kind of things. And that's a great way um, when they collaborate that way to figure figure yes. out a new system. Yep. We use plan book too. And next um, week we get out Fridays at 2.30. And so that's when we meet um, at least three of the four Fridays, we have something going on. And so this next Friday um, we'll meet together and they'll use the plan book and they'll print off, make a list of their standards, and then they'll meet with their groups that they, you know, math people will meet the English people and make sure that we're getting all the standards covered. Okay. Um, so I know I've worked with some of you, uh, professional development for your teachers and uh, also for you as administrators, just to help with that whole implementation science piece. Um, so this year or moving forward, do you have any of that scheduled or is there more that you would like? Um, because we can kind of blend that with the last section here, which is areas or services where we can help provide some more support for you um, to, to work with teachers individually or as departments. I want you to know we didn't make this because I'm not sure I would ask you what you would want to trade for more support. Yeah. <laughs> but we're, we're, <laughs> we're asking the questions they gave us. <laughs> yes. As as the as the <laughs> curriculum as the as the curriculum nerd here, um, my thought is always, you know, um, you as principals have a lot to manage already. Um, and are there areas with the implementation piece where we can offer service to you to take some of that load or work with individual teachers who might be either resistant, hesitant, scared, um, you know, to really move over to the new materials or feel just very challenged by them. Um, so this is your real person, not your NDE, <laughs> um, sort of asking just what can we do to better support you and your teachers to, to help make it more manageable? Katrina, I'm going to sit down. Um, it's on my list. I've created my summer work list. I started on that. I'm going to take their SMART goals, and there's several of them that need to work with things like differentiated instruction. So we're going to start, the, those Fridays are nice for that type of thing. So we're going to start doing more of, you know, on this Friday, you're going to work with these three or four teachers. The rest of them can work in their rooms. Gotcha. You know, I have some that, that need some serious classroom management. So um, we're going to start doing that, and I'm going to work on that with, I'm going to take care of that over the summer. Um, we meet May 5th and that's the day that, um, we'll work on our SMART goals and then we'll kind of, um, they're going to come up with a list of, uh, professional development that they could do. Okay. Seek that out. So we're going to get more into that. I love that idea of more personalized, um, yeah. professional development. You know, some of them have great classroom management. I have about three or four that could, <sighs> yeah. Yeah. I like that. Well, here's just that that reminder that uh, you are always welcome to reach out and working with, you know, cognitive coaching or instructional coaching or just doing some thought partnering with those teachers who who need some extra support there. Anything else that you need on that, Katrina? 
I don't think so. I'll just follow up with you, Patty, on that. Okay. Um, and we can touch base on what that can look like for you. Anybody else? So that was kind of our homework. We're going to this yeah. training in a couple of weeks, first week of May, and we had to do do that. So that you're helping us with our homework. Yeah. So appreciate that. Well, thank you for your thoughts and please feel free to follow up with me if you have other things you'd like to add or just want to touch base on any other areas where you think that um, I can help serve you and um, let me know. But otherwise, I'm going to say goodbye and dive back into my Perkins grants. <laughs> so thanks, Katrina. <laughs> thanks, everybody. Thanks Take on care. that one, Katrina. <laughs> <laughs> Take care. All right. Claire has a couple things coming up here. Claire, I'll let you, I'll pull the flyers up if you want to talk. Perfect. Yep. Um, the first one is new teacher Academy. This is just a reminder that this is for brand new teachers to the profession. So maybe they're um, coming right out of college or they've done the program and are becoming teachers later in life. Um, whatever that is, these are our tentative dates. Um, they're very similar to what we had this year and we'll do four days again. Um, coaching will be involved your contact person for this will be Katrina. And so if you have new t staff members, um, please send their names to Katrina as soon as you can, because um, it is not on the OD on our ESU8 website. So just send the new teacher's name and contact information and Kat Katrina will be in touch with that. So um, again, this is for new teachers, new to the profession. And then the next thing we have student exploratory day. Um, in the past, I believe ESU8 has done this, but it's back. And so it was pre-COVID. Pre-COVID, we did some days and then we just haven't done anything since for students. So this is back and it's going to be May 31st here at the ESU8. And we're starting to talk about um, student leaders. And so we are asking principals, I will send this out in an email, but we're asking principals to just select two to three students who they think would be a good fit for this in grades fifth through eighth grade. Um, we're going to work, look at strengths. We're going to look at teamwork, um, entrepreneur, I can't even say that word, mindset. Um, but we just ask that the principals print this flyer out and give it to those two or three students that they select. And then the parent needs to use this QR code to complete the form. Um, parents responsible for getting the student there this day, as well as providing their like a sack lunch. And so again, I will send this out with more details in an email to all principals, but we just ask that you forward on this information to two to three of your students that you think would be a good fit for this. And we'll have outside um, resources here. And then our PD team will also be here helping with this day. And so hopefully we get a good turnout for that. So let me know if you have any questions with that once I send out the email, but be looking for that um, sometime this week. Great, thanks, Claire. Um, one thing I wanted to ask, so we have always done a new to ESU 8 orientation. So this is separate from what Claire was talking about, the new teacher academy, but it could be some of those same um, people, but anybody that's new to ESU 8. And so they've come in and we've talked about the services and the resources that we have available. Um, we have done this where we've had 40 some people and we have done it where we've only, we've had very few in the last couple of years, possibly because of um, when it's been held and things like that. So I just want your thoughts on it. Do you think that coming to the ESU to get that information is important? Um, we have created a video in the past. I don't know if it got shown to teachers enough. Um, what are your thoughts on that? We would like to, we'll continue it or we'll make it better. We're just, we need a little input. I think it's great to do just for any new teacher to, so we can utilize the ESU. The tough part is as a new teacher, it seems like they go to 10 different days where they're gone, whether it's the new teacher Academy or we send them to Marzano trainings, the trainings that we have, it just seems like it's a lot that, but I think the intent behind it is really good. Um, so 
I don't know if it's easier just to make a video, but then there's no way of having that fidelity that they watched it and know who all of you are. So when they see you, they can one say hello or know who to reach out to. So and those that actually come to the new teacher academy, we can get them that information. You know, they're coming in right. and some of that. But there's other people that aren't brand new teachers that are new to the ESU eight. Right. Um, and so even administrators, but and we can sure try the video thing again. Um, I agree with you, Will. I I think that it's just, I don't know that there's a better time for it either, but they're just got so much that sometimes I think they're like, you know, we're like, you were at the new teacher or new orientation, but they were just on overload. I like it in person just because, again, Will's right, they're gone for a lot of things, but you know, if they're new to the ESU, those teachers don't necessarily need to go to the new teacher or the new teacher academy period wouldn't need to come to this day. But I think it's good for them to see and meet all of the people and meet the people in their area. Yeah. All right. So um, when we were talking about this, I don't think I have the right notes up. We were talking about Claire or JC, do you remember what day it was in August? Um, if we were to have this. I think it was that like first the calendar. Whole week, Monday. Like the 7th? The, right. Yep. So August 7th, what is, I mean, are your teachers even under contract then to come to that? Or would you send them anyway? If they're, it's a new to ESU 8. In the past, we've just made them go. Okay. They're not ours under are under contract anyway. So, okay. Are they doing something at your it's building though that day? Probably, but you yeah. know what? If we know if we know this ahead of time, we can plan accordingly. Right now, knock on wood, we don't have anybody. Okay. Same here. Okay. Well, we'll we'll do it another year um, and see how it goes. And if if it's just not. Um, maybe we'll have to pivot and just do it virtual, even though, um, or um, a recording if, uh, and, and it could be a year that there's not as many people hired to, and why our numbers were lower, but I think it's just more of a timing thing, but that gives, that's good info for us. Thank you. I think just listening, I think it'd be nice to have just a video of everything that the issue offers. Just, I mean for all of my staff because their staff that's been here for 30 years and they go they'll say oh I didn't know the ESU did that and I'm like <laughs> so here's another, if we made a video and truly try and keep that under you know three minutes but probably closer to five I would guess if we're talking about everything we're doing is that something you would show at an your all staff back and so if you had it by the first of August you could maybe put that in your even if we have the day um, just something to, to share with your staff. Yeah. I'd probably put it in my beginning of the year staff, like meeting or the issue has, you know, yeah. to offer. And then I'd probably email it to them so that they could just keep it in their email. And if they ever questioned, Hey, what is the ESU, you know, can the ESU do this? Cause I get this, that question all the time is if I send this to the ESU, can they do this? Or does the ESU have something for this? And, um, I always just go to your website or ask JC because. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I'm not sure it'll be all encompassing, but we'll see what we could do and we could work on that this summer. And so mm -hmm. it will be more than just professional development. It would be like um, our media services, poster maker, all that kind of stuff. So. Yep. Just, yeah. And even yep. if you had a list or, you know, a document that said, this yeah. is what yeah. everybody does. Okay. Thank you. That's, that's very helpful. JC, you have a couple things you wanted to talk about. Sure. Yeah, I'm excited to have two technology training options this summer. So one would be the first one's geared towards your administrative assistance. So we know that sometimes the secretaries are playing such a big role and having some modern or updated tech um, experience and time to collaborate with their peers in their roles and job specific tech related um, options. So we'll go through some like Google um, items like Gmail and um, 
as well as like Canva and some of the artificial intelligence, how that's going to play a role in their positions potentially. Um, there's a flyer to come, but I would welcome you to pass the word on to your um, administrative assistants if we would love to see them that day. And then the second one will be closer to like a back to school time frame of August 1st. That will be for um, teachers that are wanting to brush up on tech skills. And we, that was similar to what we did last year. And so that's a um, opportunity to, you know, dive into what they it won't be um, content specific and it's elementary through high schools, but that time can be exposure to some of the new um, tech um, options out there, especially with the artificial intelligence growing in popularity in a lot of different platforms. So we'll look at that and then um, they'll have some time to collaborate as well and get some just one-on-one -on -one assistance. And if it's somebody that you know, is super techie, I invite them. And if it's someone that really struggles with tech, we invite them. And that can, as I bop around to school throughout the year, that sometimes that first day has been helpful to get to know them. And um, then I can follow up with them throughout the year with tech um, as they or you see fit. So well, fancy, pretty flyers to come. And otherwise, yeah, I hope that they can Hope you'll pass that along and invite them to participate. And somebody's knocking at the door, so I'll be right back. Thanks. Thanks, JC. Um, I, I think I just have one more thing. Um, so PFA training, This I said there was a little bit more on safety training that Steph had talked about. So um, NDE offers this list right here of some different trainings. Um, and one is the psychological first aid S they call it for schools. But um, what I want to know is they're asking if ESUs would train what they're calling an ESU school team. And you can read what she said here, but basically they, it's a two day training of PFA with ESU people and then one or two people from all of our member schools. And so then we say, let's say, um, Battle Creek has an incident and they need some support, we would, they say, survey, you know, member schools who's available or who's close that could send support outside of the school. Um, so my thought is, um, I know that a lot of our schools already have PFA trained teams. ESU has a PFA trained team. It's not one that's been trained together and we already kind of support each other if needed, but I would be curious if you think this would be important to have this model. Two ESUs have done it, and so they're trying to promote it. Do you guys have PFA trained teams already? Psychological first aid? We do, Molly. Yeah. I know I had a list at one time and, and a lot of our schools do have them already trained. So do you see value in this? Or because I know that right now um, in this past year when we've had some incidences, you know, Pierce or Stanton, um, neighboring schools have automatically, you know, said, hey, let me know if you need anything. Um, they've sent our psychs from their schools to help or, or, you know, those kind of things. And so I don't know if, if it's necessary. The two have done it, have done it, are out in panhandle schools. And maybe it makes a difference because schools aren't that close and they don't maybe rely on their neighbors. I don't know, but I will ask superintendents next week too, they're in, but do you guys have any comments, thoughts on that? I feel like it's a bad idea. Um, we don't have these. Okay. I mean, yeah, I guess some of them, but it, okay. I've not been put in that situation. So I think in that situation, it would be really nice. <laughs> right. I guess. And I would just say, team, no team, if you're ever in that situation, please reach out to us. We do know who has, and we, you know, we will try and find support 
if we don't have something like this made. But yep. All right, I will follow up with superintendents and see, and then kind of decide whether we're gonna go forward with that. Um, and the last two things, um, we're coming on a full hour here, are um, Megan just put two flyers in here that she has um, things coming up for MTSS. Um, Megan is still on maternity leave, but she's been organizing and getting things ready here um, for summer. And um, this one, I believe, is this the one, Claire, you're helping with? Um, yes, is it is. Yep, and so we're just looking at the interventions. Um, we've had a lot of schools reach out saying they need some help with interventions and just aligning them um, with their curriculum that they are doing. And so we are doing, we've decided to split it up K2 and three, six. And so there will be two separate dates for that. Um, and really that will be just kind of be a small group one-on-one -on -one time to help teachers build those interventions and what that might, those groups might look like. And then she has a couple here, um, one with having a really tight, hard time. These are both secondary. Um, so Thank I think you. she's been in touch with those um, schools that are beginning the secondary MTSS implementation. And so just a reminder to sign up uh, for those through um, the ESU 8 website. Thanks, Claire. Yep. All right, anything else that anybody would like to talk to or their counterparts this morning? Anything on your mind? Will, you're muted if you're asking. Something. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Uh, most of you do high school. I'm just curious, what do you guys do for like a, a step up day or when you bring your sixth graders up to the junior high? Does anyone have the transition plan or yeah, something that's just dynamite that we need to add in? Well, we do something. I don't know if it's dynamite or not. Um, on the 18th, we actually have a move up day. They spend a day in seventh grade. Most of our junior high kids are gone to a track meet. So um, uh, I, and I can tell you that Carrie has gone to way more work than I had intended this to be. Um, I had done this at the previous school I was at, and we only kind of did it for the morning because all of our junior high core classes are in the morning because most of the stuff they take off for is in the afternoon. So we moved all core classes in the morning. And then that's that's as long as I kept them. Well, she figured they should be here the whole day. So she's got this big old schedule planned and has divided them up into groups and way more work than I had intended, but she did a good job with it. So they're just gonna spend a day in seventh grade, which isn't anything whoop whoop. Lots of people do that. <laughs> Okay, thank you. I don't know if this really meets that, but I just learned that um, what Neely Oakdale's doing, um, Ben, with your dances, you reuse your prom decorations and they have three days of dances, but it's like a transition and you can add like uh, seventh and or eighth and the freshman, what, I don't know, Ben, you wanna add to that? But I thought that was interesting. We did K-6 um, on Sunday. Uh, from four to six thirty, and then uh, four to six, and then six thirty or seven to eight, eight thirty Sunday night. We did seven, excuse me, eight nine, and tonight we have six seven, and they all get to use the prom decorations. But it's those those sixth graders leaving and those seventh graders, so they'll kind of meet each other. It's not really about the school and the academics; it's more about the social meeting those kids and thought that was a cool idea to reuse your prom decorations and to start fostering those relationships. I wish it was my idea, but it wasn't. Oh, well, Neely's idea. <laughs> I liked it. Great. Anything else anybody has? End of the year coming. Um, <laughs> let us know how we can support you um, if you need anything. Um, are thinking about next year also. I like Moscato, Molly. <laughs> I can support you there. <laughs> okay, thanks. Oops, stop, record, edit. <laughs> All right, well, I won't take up any more of your time. Um, I appreciate you guys coming and um, I will send this out and we're working on a one spot with all of our summer flyers and stuff. So that'll be coming out to you hopefully by next week too. So that'll be helpful to share with teachers and you. 
All right. Have a great day. Thanks, Molly. Thank you. You too. Thank you.